good evening friends at the onset let me wish all of you a happy holi the festival of colors wishing all the women on this platform a very happy women's day friends this festival the color of the holi festival is a festival of joy happiness good health and success that's what exactly i'm wishing for each one of you as the saying goes every beginning has an end and end awaiting the arrival of yet another dawn well today is the last episode of the five cat isami achiever series of learning on the virtual platform we have one in person awaiting in the line i take this opportunity to thank our gat isami constitutional area leader ca6 pid narendra bhandari sir for giving us this wonderful platform to assess accomplish ascend enrich and empower and also enhance our skills at the same time empowering leos lions lady lion leaders across isami sir as you have always emphasized on one aspect of learning and that is to accept challenges break self created barriers to accomplish the goals set by our own selves i sincerely hope that we have made you proud by coming out in flying colors sir as you all know we have had lady lions as our chief guest right from the inaugural session when we were fortunate to have with us international vice president dr patty hill who flagged off this inaugural session with her kind and motivational words what followed next was yet another episode with a lady with an iron hand lion sangeeta jatia who created an impact with her strong words of inspiration the following episodes we had a lady who had stood against all adversities breaking traditional barriers and becoming the first lady international director from the isame area yes you have guessed it right pid lion nilofar bakhtiar ji in the fourth episode we had a lady with a golden heart lion aruna abhay oswal as her chief guest who was with us who has given us with her words of wisdom insights that struggles are part of life but to move ahead breaking those barriers with strong grit is what we as lions can accomplish without losing our control over things that are beyond our control and today as you all are well aware we have with us as our chief guest gloria giri who heads the lions club international as a regional manager of isam and africa operations a lady who has a list of accomplishments that follows her we are indeed grateful to her for accepting our invitation to join us today as our chief guest and motivate us with her experience of being a part of our lions organization and give us a glimpse of the other organizations she is associated with and how she has reached her current position heading the regional operational heads of isam and africa the introduction of our chief guest gloria giri will be done by lion mandira chanda who is also a part of our core committee along with lion dr alpana verma lion jayanti mallik and lion kalyani rangarajan the support received from each of my team members has been tremendous and i am grateful to each of them for their unconditional support they have stood by my side like rock solid support thank you my team of coordinators without whose support it would have not have been possible to achieve success i would also like to thank each and every presenter and the mentor of each episode right from lion dr toshniwal lion jayanti mallik lion kalyani rangarajan and lion monica savant who have always supported me along with their team of presenters to make each and every series a grand success finally my pillar of strength my silent supporter and motivator my guru lion nagaraju sir who has been constantly guiding me and encouraging me 
with his kind words of wisdom. How can I forget Nain Anand Mehta, who with his robust and happy-go-lucky attitude brings smiles on everyone's face. Thank you, Lion Nagaraju sir and Lion Anand Mehta for your support. My sincere thanks to each and every guest, area leaders, district governors, participants, attendees and technical support team who have been a part of our journey on this virtual platform these last couple of months. Once again, I'd like to thank our GAT Isami Constitutional Area Leader CA6, PID Narendra Bhandari sir for the faith and trust bestowed upon me by entrusting me to lead this entire team of 20 strong women LCIP and FBI graduates. It was indeed a wonderful learning journey with loads of opportunities to enhance my leadership skills by being a part of your core committee. Sir, thank you so much. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Jyoti. Good evening to all the participants of this uh, GAD Isame Achievers evening. Uh, Jyoti, you sound a little low today. I do not know because it is your last episode or what, I don't know. But you should be sounding much, much, uh, I would say, stronger because the way you have led this group of 20 strong LCIP graduates and uh, created various programs. In fact, each and every program has been a uh, example. Each and every program has been different. And uh, all our LCIP graduates had an opportunity to expose their talent differently, not the same traditional lectures or same thing. Every program was a different. It was very nicely designed. Of course, with the support of your team, you have really done exceedingly well. In fact, I would uh, go one step further. Uh, all of you have exceeded my expectations. I thought that it was just an opportunity. Some people will join, they will have some, uh, uh, some time of fun, but each and every one, they came so much prepared. They have done a lot of homework and they, uh, I would say the casual approach of our presenters have now, we, have now gone, you know, everyone comes prepared. Uh, in earlier days, when we used to have this program, we used to see that the person, the presenter would come at the last moment and speak for a few moments, speak something and just go away. But this program has created a great impact amongst uh, the lines of Isami, not only an impact, but this has also created a curiosity and more than curiosity, an attitude to learn, an attitude to give. That is what is the outcome of this program. My compliments to Jyoti, you also. Uh, Gloria Giri, let me add a few words about her. Since the time she has taken over the Isami office as regional manager, let me tell you the lions of Isami are feeling very, very comfortable. Any smallest or any uh, complicated uh, uh, challenges, they have been very, very, easily addressed by Gloria and the support that her team provides to all the lions throughout Isami. Of course, Ruchita, as, after joining as the uh, manager of operations, is also a great support to Gloria. Of course, if I name each and every person in Isami office, is really a great asset of our organization. And this is the real strength of Isami that we see such a nice performance in each and every district by each and every leader. Gopi Mohan, good evening to you. I was just with you three days back and I enjoyed your uh, uh, fellowship and I enjoyed your conference. My compliments to you, DG Elect, for 2022-23. I'm sure you're going to do a wonderful uh, job next year because you have shown your eagerness to give your best. My compliments to you also. My compliments to all the participants of course, uh, I could see, I did see Shankar, he was there. We will be meeting in Chennai on 28th for our GAT conclave. And I look forward to meeting each and every one of you uh, on any occasion uh, where Global Action Team program is concerned. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening and wish you all the best, all the presenters. I know you will rock today and make this uh, not the last event, I would say, this is the beginning. 
in fact uh, all the participants all the presenters would be looking forward to many more such programs shortly in maybe in the month of april we will be announcing one or two more uh, such series that will keep you engaged and give you opportunities to get to be connected with uh, lines of isami with this thank you very much and thank you gloria for joining us today thank you very much thank you so much sir for your kind words of encouragement i would introduce our chief guest of the evening gloria giri over to you mandira ji thank you jyoti it is my pleasure to introduce a friend and a gracious lady uh, whom i have met a few uh, months ago at the fbi lcip graduates meet at hyderabad so gloria giri is the regional manager for the isami and africa operations she leads a team of around 30 resources in mumbai who support the line members driving the lci and lcif initiative across membership development member operations donor service csr fundraising lcif grants supply chain and fulfillment accounts receivable uh, legal and compliance translations global action team and leadership development the team and gloria have been closely working with the headquarters looking at all the opportunities for continual improvement be it in terms of cross functional training as well as introducing automation to further enhance our line members experience in response time gloria joined lions clubs in october 2020 and brings in over 24 years of work experience in core operations uh, customer service process excellence people and business development a large part of the experience has been in the business process transformation industry and very specially in the travel and airline segment gloria has a masters degree in arts and has done her diploma in business management from Xavier's Institute of Management Mumbai she is a trained project manager iso 9000 qualified auditor and she has earned six sigma green belt certification wow gloria is a avid adventure sports enthusiast and a sudoku fan she works actively with her local church community as well as supports causes for children's welfare gloria shares that what made her consider lions that we enable our network of volunteers where kindness matters where we can experience the feeling of service the vision is so simple and clear to be the global leaders in community and humanitarian service she is delighted to be a part of this meeting and looks forward to discussing with you all how the sami and africa regional office can help out more so with these few words i present before you line gloria over to you gloria thank you lai mandira and of course even pid bhandari for those really kind words about me and the regional office i'm nothing without the team i'm blessed to have a team like them but really thank you and i'm just going to again quickly just wish a very good evening to pid bhandari lai jyoti and the core committee members lai kalyani lai mandira lai jayanti and lai dr alpana and of course all my fellow achievers and uh, leaders I'm thrilled to be here today. You know, thank you so much for mm -hmm. inviting me and allowing me to be a part of the session today. I'm really looking forward to hear all the presenters, Lion Monica, Lion Suchitra, Lion Sagala, and who I've been told is like 34 plus years with Lion, great sports person, Lion Advocate Surya Prabha, very first lady mm -hmm. district governor. I'm feeling honored, and Lion Vimla Ram Kumar. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward for you to share your knowledge with all of us. it's such an interesting topic right managing change in the last two decades you know i would like to begin with sharing one of my favorite stories about uh, change management right and where the theme is about how 
our reaction matters more than what happens to us. So once upon a time, there was a son. And he was constantly complaining to his mother. Life is miserable. I just don't know how I'm going to make it. Basically, he was just tired of fighting and struggling all the time. And it, every time it seemed that one problem got solved, another one would soon follow, right? So he was just basically grumbling to his mother. And the mother is a chef. So she takes, his, uh, takes her son to the kitchen. She fills three pots with water, places them on a high fire. Once the three pots begin to boil, right? She, the water is boiling. She places potatoes in one pot. She puts eggs in one pot and ground coffee beans in the third. And she's sitting there, letting it, you know, letting it boil without saying a word to her son. The son is grumbling and impatiently waiting, wondering what, you know, what the mother is doing. After 20 minutes, the mother turns off the burners. She takes the potatoes out in one bowl. She pulls out the boiled eggs in one bowl. And then she ladles out the coffee, right, in a cup. Then she turns to her son and tells him, son, what do you see? And he's very impatient. He's like potato, eggs, and coffee. They says, look closer and touch the potatoes. The son did that and noticed that the potatoes were soft. She then asked him, take the egg and try and break it. So, but after pulling off the shell, the son observed that the it was a hard boiled egg. It was not breaking. Finally, the mother asked the son to take a sip of the coffee. Of course, the rich aroma brings a big smile to his face. And he turns to his mother and says, mother, what does this mean? And she then explains that the potato, eggs and the coffee beans, they all face the same adversity, the boiling water. However, each one reacted differently, right? The potatoes went in strong, hard, unrelenting, but put in the boiling water, it became soft and weak. When the eggs, I mean, they were so fragile, right? thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior. It was put into the boiling water. The inside of the egg becomes really hard. However, the ground coffee beans were unique. They were exposed to boiling water. They changed the water and created something new. Right, so this has always been one of my favorite stories about uh, change management. And I think it also helps me in my day-to-day -day life also. Even when Lions had approached me, right, for the regional manager role, I was in a completely different business industry at that time. And the thought that came to my mind here, could I be coffee here? And, but when I joined, I was given to understand I am the first female regional manager in over 60 years, right? So that strengthened my resolve. I said, yes, I think I can be coffee here. Right, and of course the last two decades are probably the ones with the maximum challenges, right? For every sector. It was more so like a roller coaster ride, right? We had great highs in development, we had also great lows. And I think striking the balance, right? Or, you know, walking that tight rope was difficult for everyone, nations, people, everybody. And I think the last two years were even more difficult. But I think today, Virtual world is the new world and we're so easy, you know, makes it so easy for all of us to gather here. But I think for every challenge, fortunately, has a hidden opportunity. And for those who are proactive, forthcoming, adaptive, they did great. And most of the changes are now surfacing. I think in the beginning of our last two decades, at least for India, we were getting onto that planning, experimenting, right? And I think we've reached there now. And of course, the way we look at empowering women, I mean, I firmly believe, I think we're already empowered. We adapt to changes so very quickly. And it's really important we accept ourselves, right? We got to know and enhance our own capabilities. And we just have to be unapologetically you, right? I have to be unapologetically me, right? That's what, it, that's what I believe in. And today I also wanted to share a little bit on, you know, how Lions has adapted, right, to the changing times when I'm talking about LCI because I was doing a little research, you know, before I came on to my, this call today. And I was really looking at the various digital applications, right, developed in the last two decades. 
my LCI, my Lion, Insights, Learn, Shop, and how these apps are really helping all of us stay connected, being well informed, right, about membership, leadership, service, donation trends in our regions and around the world, right? These applications are, are a way for Lions to feel that they're part of the global network of volunteers. They help us as an organization to measure the impact of the service or the difference we are making in uplifting our communities. So today I think, you know, I will request that, you know, all of us really look at service reporting, you know, very, very uh, keenly because we are able to provide tangible evidence of our global engagement. We are able to measure impact, right? And of course, we get best practice sharing, you know, what is happening in our community. This ultimately helps, you know, to grow our member base. So measurement leads to insight. And I think that is one request that I will make, you know, to all my fellow participants here. And because in the essence, I think lions are change makers of our communities. And as an organization, we're finding ways to measure and magnify the change, right? So that we become the global leader in community and humanitarian service. I think the first virtual convention, you know, that was held in June, 2021, it is a testimony to how we adapted to the challenges posed by the pandemic. And I think LCI forward, you know, in the entire uh, terms in terms of our strategy, its successes really demonstrate our vision achievements in the second century of our service. And even at the regional office, I think we're really looking at, you know, how we can look at sustainable materials to support our environment. I think that's one of our biggest focus areas for change management. And I hope all of us can play a part in it. And uh, when we're really looking at, uh, you know, I was also doing some research on looking at what are our current estimates, which places India's rate of female participation in the formal labor force. We are at only a 24%. We are amongst the lowest in the developing nations. I was quite surprised by that actually when I read it. And uh, majority of Indian women work in the informal sector in jobs, you know, which has limited social protection, low wages. But it is estimated that if Indian economy could grow by uh, an additional 60% by 2025, I mean, we'll be able to add $2.9 trillion if women were represented in the formal economy at the same rate as men. I was completely, you know, taken aback by this statistic. And I was like, I was like, okay, programs like the one we're doing today, I think can surely help with that. This program today has been conceptualized the way I understand it is to encourage, you know, all of us more lady lions to empower ourselves into the leadership fold of Lionism across Assami. And I think this platform has really created to be serving as a strong task force, enhance the image of our organization, giving our LSIPs and FDI graduates an opportunity to impart uh, knowledge, not, not only to Lions, but to non-Lions and our youth, right? To really help build a strong pillar of service, leadership, fellowship, increasing women and youth membership. And I really wish you all the best. And uh, with that, you know, I just want to, you know, say again, you know, thank you. I'm really thrilled, you know, that you invited me here today. I'm really happy to be a part of the session. I'm happy to connect with all of you. I really appreciate it. All the best and happy holy, everyone. Thank you so much, Gloria, for the wonderful motivational words. We are indeed grateful to you for having accepted our invitation to be a part My of pleasure. our session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Before I start the program today of the presenters, I would like to introduce the first presenter today, who in turn will be introducing the team. So today I'm going to introduce a lady, an architect, interior designer by profession, practicing at Belga, Karnataka for more than three decades. She joined Lions Clubs International in the year 2010, serving at home club Belgaum Shapur and district at various positions. She had the privilege to be crowned as the first lady district governor at the 43rd district convention of district 317B in the year 2018-19. She has participated in all the leadership institutes provided by LCI and certified as Lion Certified Instructor 
LCIP in the year 2019. A trainer by interest, her innovative ideas and creative techniques coupled with her charming personality facilitates her as a passionate and a dedicated trainer. Till date, she has got the privilege of leading 115 plus sessions. I would like to present past district governor, LCIP certified and the mentor of today's team, Monica Savant. Thank you, Jyoti. Thanks a lot for that great and lovely introduction of mine. You really did a job that no one can beat to. Friends, good evening to one and all. And I'm sure that it's really a great evening tonight when the team, which is a very special team, a team where I call as a super team, three super ladies wailing the victory, that is 3SV, that is Sugala, Suprabha, Suchitra and Vimala, who are going to give us that really, is this the change of the hour or is it that is something going with the flow? Today, the subject on which we are going to speak on or we are going to debate on is nothing but managing change in the past. And we are going to speak on it, what has happened in the last two decades and how we as women have got a space, also will be speaking on the smart technology, whether it's going to be really positive for us or negative for us. But prior to taking to the session ahead, I'm sure you should be curious to know that who this three S and V are. So I take this great opportunity and privilege to introduce one by one the speakers of the day. But prior to that, as we all know that this achievers is something that has really get, given us a great platform where each and every LCIP as well as an FDI graduate has got an opportunity to convey and speak of their own personal insights on the various topics of the trending days of today. For that, I would really like to thank our PID Narendra Bhandari, who is also the area leader of Constitutional Six, that with his brilliant idea, everywhere it's been in a great way, but with his brilliant idea, he thought, why not give a special space for the women, whereon we are speaking of gender equality, and also been trying to see that that can really get a great force of women into our fold. So friends, here we are to go with the three S and the V's of today. I would like to introduce you all, the first superstar of today's union, Sugala Yalmali. A Leo turned lion who is de dedicated 30 year, 36 years of her life to the organization in serving and also escaling herself as a great leader. She's a faculty development institute graduate since 2017, but simultaneously in her personal life, she's a commerce graduate and also has learned a part of the law statistics. An active sportswoman, and but simultaneously equally active in this organization where she's got an opportunity to motivate many people to join this organization and simultaneously where she could succeed to get 65, 65 lions join this organization. Friends, a lady who has always marked a difference wherever she goes, she carries the charisma and yes, and that has brought great laurels to her whereon she is going to be the next CEO of her district 317B as the governor representing at multiple and nation ahead. So friends, here is Sugala Yalmali, who is going to be one of the presenter. Moving Thanks. ahead to the second one, where we spoke about Sugala just touching the initiation of the law subjects, but couldn't achieve it. But friends, we have someone who has done it in complete, an advocate by profession, a charter member who has joined this organization in the year 1998. She has been crowned as the first lady of her district, 318D at Kerala, and she's been she's given this organization by serving at the best possible places at district and also at the multiple. Uh, FDI graduate since 2019. She's also a lady who has never just taken her education, but still is into full force, practicing as a great advocate in her hometown and represents herself both at the lower and the high court. Her club has great projects doing rendering services to the society but one of the marked and the renowned service project is the artificial limb center where the limbs have been manufactured and distributed and we have a great count of 6,000 plus beneficiaries till date. So friends over here we have advocate Surya Prabha who is going to be the second presenter of the day. Now moving ahead to when we have someone when we speak about Isame. We know we stretch our hands with friendship all around the world. 
but yes this team wouldn't be complete without this super fine a gracious lady who is also not only from our country but also has joined hands greatly supporting this team from nepal suchitra thapra from pokhra nepal district 325b1 a teacher by profession her i can say her identity tell in self speaks this she is someone who is giving great future to the new ones and seeing that she has she can ground to become uh, for to for them to become great citizens of their own country she has also been associated to the organization with various positions that she could render to and yes her one of the most loved i can say the thing where she dedicated in a great way was the new voices conclave and the new voices where she really loved and made a difference over there at nepal friends a great i can say a accomplishment in her life for which she was been just waiting to that she's just been recently elected as the first vice district governor of her district 325k and also she is a person who has been recognized by the rstca and has been raised, ranked at the fifth position to be the most best influential woman in the year 2019 a person whom i call as a super fine because she's got a super smile always a smiling personality and yes when you all have understood the three s the three super women's why not let us get victory to their life and that just gets accomplished by here the fourth presenter of the day and she is none other than lain vimla kumar she is also a progressive melvin jones fellow friends a progressive melvin jones fellow and she's contributed so much to the lcif just imagine that how a great soul she could be where she's going to see that she really marks a difference a line a very active line since 2000 where she's joined this organization in bostwana later on at present she's become a member of the district 318d at a hometown and represents lions club of otapulam she's a post graduate and she's also completed a bachelor of education and post graduate in msc clothing and textiles and she's as she's completed a bachelor of education she is into the teaching profession past four decades friends this gracious lady she has spent a great years of her life in ethiopia botswana and yes later on she was been recruited by the country at botswana to the ministry of education and there she has spent two and a half decade rendering her services she is a qualified faculty development she is a graduate from faculty development institute since in the year uh in the uh, from them and simultaneously because of that graduation she could be a part of the dge schooling at nairobi she served at this place is possible to give her services to the organization and also is a certified quest trainer she has conducted numerous workshops at botswana nigeria zambia and at present trying to serve the best possible way at kerala her spouse who is also a past district governor colonel t ram kumar who is also a progressive melvin jones fellow and they both have at present settled at otap otapalam and are members of life of the same club over there so friends we have the three super fives the three great ladies over here with who gets victory that is vimala and all the four together are going to take to a great round where we are going to see and speak about how the managing change in the past two decades has really affected the women and how the technology that we are been following or, or to which we have connected in such a great way is it really supporting us or is it become a challenge for us so friends i'm sure you all are curious and want to hear from the words of wisdom of these four ladies they are going to speak for as well as they are going to counter the talks so let us start the debate over here wherein when we speak about something called as gender equality we speak a lots about the identity given to the women we speak that today yes as gloria said we are just 24% gloria you are from mumbai and we all know that the best means of transportation and the very famous means of transportation worldwide is the mumbai local trains dear friend i would just like to ask you when the train has 12 bogies in all why are just the three bogies for our movement given over there that itself shows that that is what we have gained pre till now but yes we are marking a difference where on the government of mumbai has made that every hour a special ladies train is been released 
where on the ladies can safely travel to the job and return back home town or to their home places too so that is what we have i don't say that we have got it but yes we have won over the situation and let us see how this situation is being taken by the four participants of the day today over here vimla ji we all know that you are a great teacher i also know that ever evolving human desire the drives the development of men and women are almost alike over the past two decades we have witnessed a conspicuous change in women and less involved who are less involved in household and less involved also in the management of the house and child care and are more increasing getting involved and expanding themselves into the other areas of society so how would you take this change is it going to be a change that has really marked a difference to the identity of the women or how so i would like to just respond i would request you to just respond on that is it a change that a woman has got it herself or is it something that has been given a ready platter for women to have her own space created vimla ji would like to hear from you henceforth uh thank you line monica for uh, first of all that brief introduction and to address your um, question my take on this topic is that the that education and the inclusiveness of women in society is considered to be one of the strongest contributing factors uh, to women's empowerment and this has therefore definitely opened up several opportunities for women uh, just to give a brief uh, uh, overview in uh, many states in india girls are provided uh, with free education up to the uh, they finish high school and this motivates them to be educated and therefore to gain knowledge and therefore to become empowered uh, schools have also improved uh, very very significantly they have improved high in facilities with toilets for girls and even installing sanitary pad dispensing machines motivating girls therefore to attend school uh, if girls attend school therefore they get educated and therefore they get empowered another united uh, one of the important united nations sustainable goal number 5 is to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls there has been great progress over the last two decades as more girls are coming to schools fewer girls are getting or are forced into marriage and more women are serving in parliament and positions of leadership we have just seen gloria who has taken up this position here in nisame uh, laws are being reformed to advance gender equality uh, hillary clinton said and i quote women are the largest untapped reservoir of talent in the world unquote also looking at educational institutions they have now ensured that there are strict measures in place to ensure proper academic support for women for example the indian institutes of technology have increased their intake to accommodate more women uh so this is about the uh, change that education can bring about and how women can be empowered i would also like to speak about inclusiveness of women uh, many organizations are leading this change uh, we have seen the same office also leading this change here in appointing a woman um and uh, the uh, stock exchange board of india brought in a very great change in 2015 when they insisted that every company uh, board should have at least one woman member on their board so that is that, that is a great um, help for women's empowerment parliaments and panchayati raj are to be represented at at least 30% women uh, even though in india we do not have that representation i know in bangladesh they have 30% representation of women in the parliament um what about the different services they have now accepted women in their fighting forces and we have many women who have taken up uh, army as a career um women have also become renowned pilots and as recently as last week we had women pilots bringing in students from war torn ukraine what more can we speak about i mean empowerment empowering women we find them in all areas of uh, in all careers uh the future of women is uh full of success every field they pursue 
and um, with these uh, our organization I, I can't stop without talking about our organization lions clubs international they in 1987 uh, included women and um, lci also adopted gender neutral language which means that all the documents did not have a chairman or a chairwoman it was now a chairperson so it was gender neutral uh, our first woman president Lion Goodrum, who should have also been here today, but unfortunately not. We still have a great lady in Gloria who's representing Isame here. And um, uh, we, I can also talk about two important uh, self-help groups. We have um, the uh, self-help groups who are playing a great role in society as uh, finance is provided in the form of loans. And in Kerala, I don't know if you have this, we have an organization called Kudumbashri, which is run by women, and they organize finance for themselves by putting in money every month so that they can look after their needs. During the pandemic, we had ASHA workers who contributed in a great way to help communities get vaccinated. I think uh, a lot for women's empowerment. That's really nice of you, Vimlaji. And I could understand from your talks that yes, in the several ways a woman could dignify her presence over there was just accepting to the viewpoints of the woman for her efforts put in, but simultaneously raising her own status by acquiring good education, awareness, and seeing that literacy is kept apart at a distance and when more knowledge takes them in a great way ahead. So simultaneously, let us hear from our friend Suchitra, who is from Nepal, whereon we see a great growth in the membership to the organization, but simultaneously great contribution to the community under the fold of women. So, Suchitra, we would like to hear from you to equally. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, good evening to all. It's a great pleasure. The, thank you, Bimla, Bimla Madam, for your input. As we are talking about the managing the change in the last two decades, uh, I'm talking about some facts. Uh, facts. Uh, this change is inevitable. Change is constant. So, Chitra, How well you... said by the uh, Jack Confield, change is inevitable in life. You can either resist it and potentially get run over it, or you can choose to cooperate with it, adapt it, and learn how to benefit from it. When you embrace change, you will begin to see it as an opportunity for growth. So talking about our organization, we can see that uh, while we were in LCIP and Hyderabad meet, we were 25 women over there from Isami area. And we can see that this FDI refreshed program, which enhanced our capacity day by day, one after another episode has enhanced our capacity and we are getting more empowered by day by day. And here we are with this uh, achieve, achievers team. And this is the last episode we are go going to. And in between this capability, which we are getting and learning and going through, it's a great, a great learning session. And we are empowered in this way. So I'm talking about the fact like shares of uh, women, uh, female work, uh, workers, like we can see our membership also has raised by 28% to 34% approximately. When we talk uh, talking about uh, some facts and the data that 65% uh, 60, uh, of uh, women are involved in people and culture, 57 in co content productions, professional and overall uh, technical field, 49%, marketing, 40%, sales 30, uh, 37%, product development 33%, data and AI 26%, engineering 15%, cloud in, uh, computing 12%. We can see this, these are the data uh, which shows that how women empowerment is going within this time. Breaking the bar bar barrier in the leadership role, these are the changes which uh, took place due to the professional, old habit is changing to the new habits. It is not a diet. It is not a phase. It is a permanent life, uh, life changing situation which we are facing and going ahead. So when we talk about the labor work, talk about labor force, we can see that. See this, women, the labor force is 90%, whereas male is 80%. So with this, uh, even though there are many barriers, but women are ahead, going, uplifting themselves one after another. Uh, so according to the uh, survey, which is done in 29 uh, countries, it is said that 
uh, daughters uh, of employed women, they are mothers are 1.21 times more likely to be employed, 129 times more likely to be supervised by working women have a positive impact on their children. When we are talking about the health of the woman, we, when we talk about the health of the woman, then we, we can see that healthy food, healthy, healthy body, exercise more, stress less. Uh, in a study by Jennifer Capito of the Max Planck Institute Demographic Research shows that working women end up healthier than women who do unpaid work. They lived a longer life, risk of that is 25% less, work outside the home, those beyond just the immediate benefit employed achieve for a longer and more satisfying life, certainly a reward for women, working women. So in this way, Yes, Suchita, please continue, please continue. Yeah, in this way, we can see that uh, different uh, facts and the uh, facts and the data that uh, shows that how empowerment, women empowerment uh, is uh, going ahead. Besides, there are various barrier also. So we can go ahead in this way with this empowerment process. Thank you. Thank you, Suchitra. What a great insight with the great statistics that you did convey to us of which we were not aware to, but we feel prou or proud of what we have accomplished. We all know that in every corner of the world, every country, no matter how progressive its history, its world should be. But yes, a history of a woman is always there. In other words, I can say a woman from all parts of the world have been quietly, I can say they've been struggling and struggling just to mark a difference to their existence. I would like to invite our advocate by profession Advocate Surya Prabha, just to convey us that what Vimbala and Suchitra said, how would you like to say that are they right at their points or would you like to counter them with something that really won't agree to the mindset of a woman? So I invite over here Surya Prabha to give us the insights of her views for women in the changing world. Thank you for the opportunity, uh, Maminka and the team. Uh, see the inputs given by both Vimla and Suchitra are appreciative. But then the empowerment of women is one of the focusing issues because their position in the society has not changed much. They are still treated as the weaker section of the society. Women has established about half of the total population of the country, but they suffer from many disadvantages as related to men in terms of literacy rates, labor participation rates, earnings, etc because the social, economic, and political empowerment is the need of the day, as it is the only surest way of making women empowerment conceptualized in terms of personal assertions, self-esteem, and confidence, ability to protect themselves. Since women obtain social, economic, and political participation and economic independence also, and ownership of productive assets and provide leadership, only then leadership in women will improve. Harassment of women, as a lawyer, I'll have to take this subject. Harassment of women at the workplace is the most unwanted development. Women are economically exploited with the threat of removal from workplaces also. It is still there. And women are given more work and less pay. Discrimination is also made in providing opportunities of new appointments, promotions, increments, training sessions, allowances, etc. See, sexual harassment of women at workplace is always on increasing trend without any precise control over it. I can very authentically, uh, uh, with authenticity, I'm telling this because in an, as an advocate, I'm receiving complaints even now as an ICC member of several corporates also. As highly qualified women in emerging markets struggle to balance the career, children and culture. But the lessons learned in attracting, assisting and retaining the best and brightest women can only enhance and strengthen an organization's operations worldwide. Helping these talented women grow is the only and the surest route to continue growth now and also in future. 
women have now realized the importance of higher education no doubt about it even the parents are encouraging their daughters to get higher education i accept it still 60% of our rural women are illiterate and only a very few of them develop their educational career through their intelligence and reasonable efforts so the road map for women empowerment is there but still we have miles to go on this path of empowerment therefore due recognition to them in society and their greater involvement in socio economic and political affairs becomes all the more important every person should come forward to ensure equal status for women in all spheres of life the women empowerment has become one of the essential concerns of the 21st century i would say not only at national level but also at international level even government initiatives alone would not be sufficient to achieve this goal society must take action to create a climate in which there is no gender discrimination and see that women have full opportunities of self decision making and participating in the social political and economic life of the country with a sense of equality when speaking of our own law alliance organization we are all aware that only after a century we got a woman leader as international president we had to wait almost 100 years for that and uh, even now the growth is not equivalent to what we see among men we are i think less than 25% annually i think gloria could add up on that in the concluding portion we have to wait i mean uh, even the statistics says uh, we are not promoted in the equivalent level like men among lions also there there are very few past women governors very few vice governors all over the world very few governors till now it is not gaining momentum even now so uh, i think this can be added up more with the words of sugala who is also i think taking up on this subject monica you can hand over this forward yeah, to sugala sure. yeah sure thank you surya prabha so from you i could understand that equal opportunities to be given to women in every field irrespective of the gender and yes equal respect with equal pay scale to be given because of the effort she is putting equal to a man and i do respect for your words now let's hear from sugla that how will she like to counter on the same top sugla we would like to hear from you hence now namaste everyone thank you uh, thank you surya prabha i just add few more points on her view also facts of women empowerment gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow friends is it happening if s yes, how much percentage it's happening today's women are working in and out of her home and contributing helping involving herself full pledge but still they are not getting actually for what they deserve feminism is not about making women strong cause they already strong and it's about the change the way does it happening you can answer yourself do you feel in any corner women empowerment have taken place 100% the real fact is women empowerment or female empowerment is the process by which women gain influence and equal opportunity to pursue her personal and social and economic endeavors she is engaging herself in all and every parts of corner of our society that too on the same basis as man is but in reality in real fact is it not that women were given what they deserve women were given the opportunity but it's women who got it themselves with her dynamism and dedication and by her education approach in uh, taking initiative fighting it out in leadership barriers also we cannot blame men or women the because we all are know that 
and nowadays we are observing that women leader encouraging other women also and as well as men also but we need still more uh, encouragement from men and women and they have to respect another woman to come forward and she has to achieve what she want to achieve in the society that is more requirement now we need over here and they should come from under the one roof all should come under one roof with having one intention then only we can fight for gender equality otherwise it will not reaching what we are expecting in the education field also in some areas we can see that we are sending our boys i mean sons to the higher education and other things also but whereas if it comes for a girl child we will think 10 times to send her out even for the hostel even for the higher education and everywhere so this is what we are facing nowadays change is there of course i don't say that there is no change but up to what percentage the change has been taken place nowadays so this is the uh, women empowerment what we are seeing in 20 decades so i just conclude my words with this few uh, thoughts of mine over to monica thank you sugala it was so nice to hear from you that yes the change is happening but still a change has to come and that is what we could understand that what always happening is at a lower space when the demands from a women are on a higher scale why not get the recognition and the due respect that what we are due for so friends when we have like bimla and suchitra speaking for women they are having a change and making great recognitions in the past two decades and have brought glorial i can say glory to the feminine hood of our country or across the world but simultaneously sugla and our dear advocate surya prabha did speak the facts and the facts are the facts of our life so friends when we have understood about women why not move ahead to the change that is brought in everyone's life that is due to the technologies change in technologies surely makes life easier and also rewards us by providing resources or tools that makes our life much and much easier as possible so technology has a more on positive impact on human on human as well as on society as compared to the negative one but over here let us see what our four friends would like to counter on and so i invite vimla ji how would you like to respond to the technology that has been bringing change is it for the brighter safe of our human lives or it's going to take us on to something that is unseen challenges of life so here is the floor for you now thank you thank you lan monica uh, just as the industrial revolution brought about changes and uh, humanity accepted uh, those changes in 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 the years uh, that followed uh, in the past two decades also there have been great changes on the technology front uh, technology has changed our lives forever look at us now we are still uh, able to look at one another sit across uh, continents talking to one another and listening to one another so te technology has really changed our lives advancements in technology have made living different today we are unable to be without our smartphones credit cards or uh, code scanners gadgets in the homes or the internet a small um, space when we do not have the internet gives us uh, so much of stress at least in our older generation it may be less but the younger generation without the internet they they are nowhere without that our meetings have changed uh, like as was mentioned before uh, it's become virtual uh, we have been able to carry on our uh, meetings with the clubs Simla ji can you please uh, yeah continue okay have you been hearing or should i start off again no no you can you can you can you just uh, you can continue it please okay thank you well our meetings have changed from uh, physical locations to the virtual world advancement in communication system means that we no longer need to go through oh, yes, uh, i can go yes. the narendra bandari is let me may not okay about 
Vimla, please continue. Please continue. That, that we no need that we no longer need to go through a telephone company to make long distance calls. With all the social platforms that are now available, we can make video and audio calls, which have reduced all the distances between places and people. Children are now uh, homeschooling over the internet, and the need for teachers and an infrastructure may soon become redundant because uh, the world has seen that you can still have uh, a continuous education through the internet or uh, online platforms. Um, we have to go, we, we, I, I can give one example about 20, 30 years ago, uh, when we have to travel, we used to have paper tickets, which meant that uh, we were destroying the environment by cutting down trees and making paper. Now, we do not even need any uh, form of a paper ticket, you can just carry the tickets on your smartphones. You don't need a travel company to book your ticket. You can uh, just go onto the internet and uh, uh, want, wherever you want to go, you can buy your tickets. What about um, uh, billing and payments? I think that has been a great change. Billing and payments, you can go to your local vegetable vendor on the street and he will have his, you can pay through Google or you can do Google Pay. You just have to pay. You just have to scan the code. So these have been real uh, advantages for us. Um, another good thing is, of course, I do feel that it may have made us lazy, but life has become very comfortable. Uh, you could just call Alexa and tell her, play this music for us, or you switch on the fan, or you play the, put on the air conditioner. Uh, you could do all kinds of things. So these technological changes have really uh, helped us in different ways to advance in our lives. The pandemic has also introduced robots uh, and uh, who would serve you, especially because people were in isolation in the hospitals. There were robots which were used to serve. And now you even don't need your buy or your maid. You have robotic cleaners, which you can just use to clean your homes. So the, 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 these are some of the changes I was thinking of, which have helped to make life for us, women especially, uh, very um, useful and advantageous. And I, I go with those technological changes. Uh, thank you. Over to, over to my Suchitra. Yes, prior to that, so Vimla ji, I could understand from your talks that yes, Technology is so important in our lives that because it helps us to deal with every, every small uh, minute thing with a great day. And that is, it makes our day's dynamics go easy. So when we could hear from you and get a great insight of the technology change that is uh, the change in technology that has affected our life in a positive way. Now let's hear from our friend Suchitra. How would she like to add on to it? Suchitra, please, we invite you to give your insights too. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Vim Lazi, and thank you, Monica, uh, Monica Man. Uh, it's a great uh, for your input. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, this, uh, technological, te this technological change has uh, the very much, uh, very much, uh, in fact, we can see very much positive things that we all are here together today. We are all connected together. We are here as a family, global family. We are here. And it's a very easy way way of living that from our home only we are just getting get connected to each other and during the during this pandemic also that we all got connected to each other so we can share so many things and we get united in in, in a way like it's a very much beneficial i uh, for even kids for uh, women for men as well and for for the emergency uh, we can see that for the images this texting and messaging it is very helpful pinable like in health sector also if you are you can consult with uh, with expertise from far away so these are the benefits we are, which we are getting of this uh, technological changes yeah of course there are some uh, effects are there but but we know that it is a uh, day by day it's improving our livelihood uh, life that we are getting more benefits from it children are also getting getting 
all the all the new uh, new expertise in their field and we are also connected in that way and i'm so happy to see you all from my home and get connected and for this uh, program also i wanted uh, i'm very much thankful to narendra bandari sir chita ma'am monica ma'am as well all the uh, team jyoti ma'am all the coordinators and all the participants and our chief guest uh, gloria ma'am and all together thank you very much thanks suchitra so nice of you so rightly did you speak from your bottom of the heart that yes technology has paved the way for multifunctionally i can say something that has made our life very easy let it be the smartphone or let it be a smart watch let it be the computer or let it be an uh, any any other device that made our life so easy due to which the technology also has made us get closer and closer and closer day by day so friends when we could understand how technology has put in positive impact on our lives it has made our lives easy to let's hear the other part of it that really is it going to benefit us in a greater long in a longer run run of our life or is it going to give an adverse effect to whatever is happening at present has it made us active or has it made put us into an inactive mode we invite over here advocate surya prabha to please speak on her view points on how the technology has really embarked its uh, i can say its existence to the human life of today's generation surya prabha can you unmute yourself please yeah technological improvements and developments we heard so much from vimla and suchi it's good but in fact it has improved our easy living and luxurious lifestyle no argument about it but at the cost of our families and friends unity it is only given lacking of reading habits in children the communication skills have come down there are detached family atmosphere and homemakers and children are uh, tempt, i mean uh, tempted to be confined to tv serials and youtube whatsapp and all other improvisations in the technology rather than a physical socializing with family members and friends as time spent on devices increases time spent in person with peers and adults decreases this can only lead to a sense of isolation and loneliness with studies showing that teenagers who report the least in person interaction and the most screen time have the highest rates of loneliness and depression ultimately the late night use of devices alters our brain production of the sleep hormone also which makes it very hard for us to get a good night's sleep it is even difficult to sit up straight when you are stooping over your cell phone many of us are suffering from back and neck pain as a result of not sitting up straight we don't hold our phone at eye level we are we are just looking at it either instead we typically lean over with our heads down to examine it all of these uh, leads to poor posture neck and back pain and occasional wrist pain also from constantly using our dev devices if some of the doctors are there in this zoom definitely they will not uh, contradict with my version of this part social media and mobile devices may lead to psychological and physical issues such as eye strain and difficulty focusing on important tasks in fact even me using this uh, computer system itself has led me to wear the spectacles now without spectacles i am not able to read the words i wasn't using this even 2 years back without uh, spectacles i could read but now without spectacles i am not able to read they may also contribute to more serious health conditions such as uh, depression and so on the overuse of technology may have a more significant impact on developing children and teenagers according to me in fact this pandemic has proved another fact of life that technological development connected us virtually in the initial stage no doubt about it even now we are only virtually connected but again it has detached all of us from a physical meeting which actually distances everyone and bringing a comfort zone where where we are 
and making even the members in our organization to slowly lose interest in lionism and until it is retrieved to the physical meetings we have got a danger of even losing membership in our own uh, organization so uh, the main impact which is uh, caused due to this technological advancement is uh, the detachment from the social gatherings and among the families and friends now to add on to this version of mine i uh, call upon our uh, monica to invite uh, sugala also yes thank you uh, surya prabha for a great insight where yes i would like to endorse to your talks that this technology change has surely brought a great and great difference in a psychological as well as physical and has increased the issues of the day but such difficulty it is that it really i uh, strains our eyes and also uh, focuses on many i can say serious health issues so friends when that has been happening and we have understood let us see what our dear friend sugala wants to add on to her views of the day on how the technology has really embarked in the past two decades good for our lives or it's going to take us on a difficult task yes Surya so, Prabha also already explained about the what are the demerits of our change in technology. Yes, friends, uh, the change in technology. What we are seeing now, uh, actually, there is a merits and demerits. So we are now we are change in technology make human being a lazy one nowadays, and human employment is already reduced. We are facing unemployment because in the fields and companies they are not using manpower right now. and they are using machine power so there we are facing the unemployment and all and no personal interaction cause of hectic schedule and work pressure and zoom and virtual platforms we are not meeting physically just because of all these things of course one side it is good and one side it is bad also so the, the communication between the family and all it is reducing friends family and all reducing and no physical activities are taken place cause of technology changes all are automatic where we are sitting where we are sitting just we are taking the switch and making it on and off there is no any uh, physical activeness in in us so wherever you are sitting you are using that all those things it has become a passion and a uh, show off now so health problems are increasing day by day nowadays because of all these things using uh, the fridge food and preserve food and microwave food which causes human lot human health a lot without understanding much if we uh, sail in technology it will lead to confusions and wrong decisions we can witness and we can take the examples of that whatsapp group and all somebody is saying something we are saying something it will make confusion somebody is uh, saying birthday wishes and somebody is saying uh, rip so so many confusions uh, we will see that in the group and all uh, means if we are not understanding properly all those things then uh, another thing is global family like losing privacy as keeping globally and our data is also leakage uh, because leakage of our personal matters and videos and uh, pictures this all are misusing and especially it is very harmful for women in the society it will create a bad name for her if it is misused and all and children are spoiling day by day because of this modern technology how they are using it it depends on that also a small child which is just few months it will not use have their food without the mobile because it is addicting with that uh, cell phone and other things also and uh, like nuclear bomb yes we are seeing earlier days where wars are taking place that they can hold that war and they can come to a conclusion by talking each other there is a time for that but nowadays because of this technology and all just one nuclear bomb puts all those things there is no time for their comprom compromise also so these technology are making our war like anything and it is destroying our uh, uh, life also so technology affects our uh this is affecting our sleeping habits as well as uh technology leaves us like 
isolated one and technology constant source of distraction technology leads neck pain and lead bad postures which is giving a bad uh, health effects and technology promotes more sedentary lifestyle in this way the technology change in technology is also one way it is good and some other way it is bad also but how we are taking it to in, into our life that depends on us and uh, with these few points i will conclude my points also i thank narendra bandari sir and monika ji and jyoti ji and uh, raju sir for giving us an uh, opportunity to share our views thank you thank you sugla for that really practical insights of how the technology is giving an impact on our personal lives friends we all know that technology is surrounded in all the best manner possible around us let it be laptops tablets phones gadgets even in our kitchen we have got such great technology that makes our life easier technology is here to stay and it's always morphing and expanding as each new technology enters the scene it has the potential to improve lives and so we get addicted to it and we get so and so prone to using all the best possible technology to make our life easy but in some case it surely due to its existence it's giving a negative impact on our life we all know that we have a great technology a great machine inside us that is our own brains who bring in this technology surrounding us our brains are the only thing that has brought everything into existence on this earth when our brains can use and make the in, uh, invention or new technologies brought it is up to us that how it's going to affect us to use it in a best possible way to see that just the positive point of it can be in a benefit to our life and to keep away the negative things as far as possible anything used extensively is going to give a negative impact in its own way so friends here we conclude on the two topics of the day that is on women empowerment and existence as well as the technology how it has changed and how it has marks its difference in the past two decades its positive points as well as the negative impact on our lives so we heard from our friends so vimla ji and suchitra speaking on for how women have made their existence and how they can still make it better in the days to come and simultaneously surya prabha and sugala conjuring on the part that yes they are there for the betterment of a human mankind or for a woman but simultaneously it counter on its negative part too the side effects are always there so we would like to now from the talk that we had on both the topics of the day we invite gloria giri to give her insights that how has the change in the past two decades affected a woman's existence as as well as the technology how is it imparted on a human life so gloria we invite you to give your insights to over here thank you uh, lion monica and i thought this i really enjoyed this uh, session today it was really great to hear you know both sides of the story and though personally right and i was reading some of lion nagaraju's uh, comments also you know so in terms of you know are you choosing uh, screen time or you know with spectacles or no but honestly to me i think the benefits far outweigh you know the adverse impact so even if you ask me on a personal level i think all that we've done in terms of the technology improvement etc yeah it is up to us to really choose you know how we really balance it it does become difficult it's not so easy we try right? even even to me right i mean late in the night 11:30 12 we're still on our mobiles trying to uh, you know respond to emails so that you know the next day is a little easier but i think it's really up to us right and if you're able to exercise a little more caution a little more discretion to me i think you know the technology far outweighs whatever we have today the benefits far outweigh the adversities and of course you know in terms of uh, the last two decades in terms of women empowerment um it's uh, easy to get sidelined by the negativity and you know as we had said earlier right that yes change is happening it may not be at the pace we expect but i think uh, it is happening change is happening and i think all of us here today right and this very session because we're able to get together have a debate you know have a discussion on these topics sometimes all that it takes is to even just vocalize it right just to mention it sometimes that's all the trigger that we need to be able to you know take this uh, forward you never know who you're inspiring at which moment 
right? So I'm really grateful, you know, that we've had this really insightful from both the groups. It was really, it was very interesting. Yeah, I had, it caught my attention all the time. So really grateful to be a part of it. And, you know, please, uh, please include me for some more sessions. I'll very happily join for all your future sessions too. So really thank you. And, you know, and I think all of us, uh, it was a really great job today. And Lion Jyoti, a special uh, shout out to you. You know, I think you organized this really, really well. Thank you so much, you know, for inviting me today. Thank you, Jyoti. Uh, thank you, Gloria. Jyoti, the floor is yours to take the session ahead too. Uh, thank you so much, uh, um, Monika ji. And yes, we have the floor open for question and answer. If anyone has some questions, we are open to asking them to our team, the entire team of five presenters today. Uh, so please, you can post your questions or you can raise your hands so we can unmute you and then you can throw your questions across. Yeah, Jyoti, we have our great Nagaraju with two, great, uh, two very important points that is noted on. And yes, he has asked a very particular question for the women of the days that have we invented any gadget that specifically makes women life easier and not more respectful. And in particular, he's speaking not only about the kitchen gadgets, but of course, something that can give due respect to a woman. So I invite the responses from, I wouldn't say only the four, but because it's an open platform, let anyone give their insights on this that when we speak so much of a woman, when we speak about her identity of womanhood and many things, where she's contributing in a great large scale, what has been made to her life being easy in a different way to see that she really falls for the technology and takes it ahead. Would anyone like to respond to this question of Nagaraju? I'll share one example. Yeah. You know? So, you know, it was a very interesting question, Lion Hakaraj, you know, in terms of a gadget that's not only helped uh, make women's life easier, but more respectable. I'll tell you, and this is out of experience, finding a clean toilet when you're on a long car drive, especially for women. You know, so <laughs> there are these apps that have now, you know, and, and I saw it also in Shark Tank, you know, in one of those episodes. You know, where, because it's, it's really difficult, right? And, you know, so, and I think that was something which I felt that, you know, and we don't have to stop in the middle of a road and, you know, in know long drives, right? I mean, so how, what do you do that? I thought in my mind, I thought that was something, one of the gadgets or apps that I think has been invented to make a woman's life easier and more respectable. Very true. Very true, Gloria. I would like to really say yes to it and also add on to it. Yes. There's so many apps that has been created by the government, by the police department in particular. Yeah. Many call numbers where on wherever you are, you can just skip the call and tra on track and they can see that the way you're moving ahead too so that you have a safe reach back home. Simultaneously, when you're on a journey and on a lonely road, you also have numbers that will really come to your save of life whenever you are into some difficult situation. There's so many apps where on a woman has been put on the forefront, forefront to support a woman and also where it has been called as speak for the woman who is in there to support you in the best possible way. So many ways different apps have come into existence that really safeguards a woman's identity but simultaneously a life of a woman whenever she needs a call on. So yes, Nagaraju sir, there are many things that are happening for the woman. The respect that has been given is surely been taking ahead in a great way to see that the women of every country has a great safer life in this very, I can say, tantric situation of the speeding uh, days of anyone's life. We, where there's so many things to counter on for her safety, there are measures taken to see that she can have a safety, happy life in the today's situation. So would you like to add on anything to it, Nagaraju? Because you always have a <laughs> out of the box thinking or something that is different. We would like to hear from you too. Actually, I was thinking of from the Lions context, perhaps this platform has already created a wonderful opportunity for the women exclusively. Maybe we can think of more. Women should, I mean, bring their ideas. I mean, everybody can create. Men can create, women can create. But ideas must come from men because they know the problem firsthand. And in case there is something that you specifically need to make your lives easier, perhaps you can tell the world that this is what we need. And then somebody will come forward with an app or a gadget or some such thing. Yes. Thank you, Nagaraju, sir. Simultaneously, yeah, uh, we have 
Padmavati who has yeah. something to be asked for. We invite Padmavati to please. And then Anandi is also raising hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I am known uh, to call a spade a spade. So here also, still I feel in a lineism, see, women have, we women are multitaskers. We have to play several roles. So when we take up in a position, see, what are the other multitasking things we are doing? They will not be considered. Only uh, we will be compared with the, a male governor or whatever position, uh, lady position. But what other extra tasks we have been doing, multitasking, that is never taken into consideration. When that is taken into consideration, more women will come into lionism and they'll be ready to take up the positions. Because I have seen with the women in and around, they say that we have some other work in the house. Let it be a homemaker, let it be a uh, working woman, self-employment or working and all that. So they have to juggle too many roles. That consideration has not been being given duly is my feeling when you compare with the same post which is done by a gentleman and by a woman. That's it, my feeling, which I have been experiencing for the past 20 years of my lineism. Uh, yeah, uh, just a minute. Thank you, Padmavati, for sharing your personal feelings on what has been happening around. But simultaneously, we also see that a great support has been given to us from the male uh, fraternity and they are always there to support us. When you being as a doctor, I'm sure that the great support you get from your son, from your husband has really given a great enlightenment to you to take your profession ahead. So yes, uh, everything has a pause and cons and we surely will see that by understanding this session in particular and the talks that will be spreaded in the days ahead about getting equality to whatever a woman is been uh, countering or, or whatever she is conveying to the organization will be given with due respect. And also it is happening at present. A small change has come and it will go yeah. to a greater change in the days to come. Yes. So we would like to hear from you, Anandi Kumari, too. Sure. Training to all. Happy congratulations. The last episode. Of huh? Kalyani, can you please unmute yourself? Uh, it was all. It is also uh, the, right for the first to the last. The same tempo, the enthusiasm, the learning, the insight, all was great. So we have to pat on all our shoulders and we have to thank Narendra Bandariji for this wonderful opportunity. I like to disagree for the respectable term because 60 years since only we are struggling. We have a glorious part where Gandhi was able to argue, argue with Arthur Shankara. So much of enlightenment we have. Women are given opportunity in the Vedic field itself. Only because of all these uh, uh, Mughal empires and uh, because of invasion only, we have been suppressed and now we are rising up. So it will take some more time. Maybe our grandchildren, 40 years later, 100 years later, after a millennium, definitely women will be really respected. There won't be any gender parity. It is only the brains which counts. It is only the talent which counts. The leadership counts. Gender will be subdued. That's what I see. But we have to go. The road for success is not that easy. And being the weaker session is how we are being. I mean, physically we are not weak. Or mentally we are very strong. Only physically only we are being made as we are weaker. But we are not weaker in any manner. So for this, the road for success will not be an easy one. But it is we. We have to be determined to walk. Because you, each and every one of you. Here, every one of us, whether you are a leader as a, for your own district as a district governor or a region chairperson or a, a GFT, GFT or a zone or president, we have proved ourselves. The club has identified, the district has identified, the family has identified. For that, we have to be very grateful. As you said, I second, our family are always behind us. They are very supportive. Our father, our, children, our son, our husband, our father-in-law, our brother, all are very supportive. So we respect everyone. So we are respected. It is we for the created aura of respect. And that is when we are able to create it, wherever we are, we are respected. Thank you for the opportunity. Kudos to all. And uh, Monica Ji, you have done a great opportunity. It is like uh, uh, like for the pros and the cons, like it was like a college, listening to college, how we are able to turn coaster and whatever it is. It was very nice. It was very nice. Thank you. Happy congratulations. Thank you, Anandi Kumari. And yes, we endorsed your talk that yes, we are duly respected at every 
point of our life with our family members, friends, society and all. Yes, but still in general, when we have an overlook, women do require the respect that they have to get it. We have gained it. We are the luckiest of all, I can say. But many, are, when we see at a percentage wise, the women are still being disrespected. And surely we all together can fight and see that we can get a change to the existence or to the identity of a woman. So over here, as the time is moving ahead, and uh, I give the floor open now, floor to Jyoti Mehta to take the session to the concluding part of it. Thank you so much, Monika ji. And yes, as the curtains fall for this virtual platform, we are looking forward to in-person meeting shortly. And I would like to thank each and every presenter, participant, get a, uh, our GATT area leader, PID Narendra Bhandari ji, area leaders, district governors, participants and friends for being our support team. Thank you so much. Until we meet again with something more challenging and something more interesting. Until then, let's feed our thoughts with positive attitude and let's move ahead in life. Thank you so much and wishing you all a happy Holi. Take care, stay safe. Thank yes, you thank everyone. You. Thank you and happy Holi to each and everyone. Sure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you to the happy Holi. Holi. achievers happy Holi for having a great show. Thank you, all thank you, thank you Monica, ma'am. Good to ma'am. Happy Holi to you all. Thank you. 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 Thank